Hey everybody, Tony Mejia here for Playbook Experts. Welcome to our YouTube channel. If you haven't been here already, we're going to recap Monday's college basketball action and give you a free winner on Tuesday. You can find all of my picks at pb.buzz slash tm playbooksports.com. And you're going to want to get in on pick packages, uh, be it daily or uh, weekly or monthly. It's March Madness time. So uh, we're going to rock college basketball. Obviously, the NBA is going strong. And uh, I'm doing really well in soccer, Champions League, and Europa League back this week. And uh, obviously, leagues domestically around the world uh, offer up opportunities to build your bankroll every single day. At the end of the month, you've got the UFL starting up, for those of you who miss uh, the gridiron, and MLB. Uh, it starts, I believe, on the 20th in Japan and will also uh, kick off on opening day before the month is up. So let's talk some college basketball. It was a light night, obviously, on Monday. Uh, typically is. The uh, two big major conference games featured Baylor turning around an early deficit and actually winning and covering in a 93-85 victory over Texas. Uh, really strong performances uh, around across the board for the Bears, but uh, Bridges took the cake in terms of dominating uh, and the, the big uh, thing to take from that, that game, the big takeaway is Dylan Disu, the Texas big man. Uh, really, they run their offense through, through him and Max Aismas, the gunner. Uh, he, Disu, uh, left the game with what is supposed to be a knee contusion. Hopefully, it's uh, nothing major uh, going forward. The Longhorns, despite the loss, likely an NCAA tournament team. Uh, NC State, not an NCAA tournament team. They're hoping to make the NIT and uh, had an opportunity to defeat Duke in Raleigh, but came up empty. That means they lost to both North Carolina and Duke back to back. The uh, Blue Devils, uh, you know, really struggled in that game uh, for at least a half, and then in in the second half were able to uh, pull away. Uh, a, a collective effort in, in terms of uh, what the Duke was able to do because they had to tread water early on. Uh, Blue Devils picked up a 12-point uh, victory, was it? 14, 79 to 65. Uh, they covered. The under came in late. Uh, and uh, again, Duke looking like uh, a team that has an opportunity to make some noise in March. Um, you know, the, the depth is starting to uh, you know, bear fruit for Duke, uh, not a one-man team. And so uh, we'll see what they do this weekend against North Carolina. Uh, they were hoping to get at least a share of the ACC title by uh, defeating the Tar Heels in Durham. That's one of the weekend's big games. Uh, in other spots around the country, you had uh, the, um, the uh, uh, McNeese State winning the Southland. They had already clinched it, uh, but picked up another big victory over Houston Christian, didn't cover 29 and a half points, just one by 18, but uh, only one loss for them in the Southland. Grambling beat Bethune-Cookman. They're uh, looking good to win the SWAC regular season title. Eastern Washington also scuffled uh, on the road, but picked up a victory. They're looking like the big skies top team. And in the MEAC, Norfolk State moved uh, one step closer to winning that regular season title uh, and uh, picking up a, valuable road win with a cover uh, and, and the Spartans uh, have a one game lead over a couple of teams in the MEAC. So looking ahead to Tuesday, you got three big games in the Big Ten. You've got Illinois looking to uh, keep their hopes of a of at least a share of the Big Ten title alive. They host Purdue. If they can pull off that win, uh, they've got a shot but need help. Uh, the Boilermakers, unlikely to lose two in a row, but this is a huge test for Purdue. I think if they pick up a win, uh, they're looking great for a number one seed. Alabama is at Florida, fresh off of that loss over the weekend at home against Tennessee. Gators also lost at South Carolina, so bounce back spot for both. Uh, and uh, Florida really tough at home. So we'll see if uh, they can trip up Alabama, who has also – you know, lost to Kentucky recently and um, going in the wrong direction. Obviously, Crimson Tide going to make the tournament, and this is likely to be a track meet, but it's a very interesting game for both. 
Uh, mentioned Carolina earlier, leading the ACC. They're looking to avoid getting tripped up on senior night by a, a game Notre Dame squad. Um, the uh, Irish will have better days ahead uh, under Micah Shrewsbury, but he's done a great job with a shorthanded squad in his first season in South Bend. Uh, they're, they're significant underdogs in Chapel Hill, but always scrappy. So we'll see how UNC handles that test. And in the Sunflower Showdown, Kansas State looking to sweep Kansas and keep their hopes alive for an at-large bid. Right now, they're on the outside looking in, uh, especially after a two-point loss over the weekend uh, against Cincinnati. Bearcats, uh, you know, really uh, foiled uh, the Wildcats' plans because K-State had been playing much better of late. But uh, if if K-State can win this game against Kansas, they host Iowa State next and uh, have a shot in the Big 12 tournament if they make some noise to sneak in there given the collective strength of the Big 12. Bubble battles on Tuesday, teams that cannot afford to lose. You've got Clemson hosting Syracuse. Um, Tigers ahead of the Orange right now in terms of resume. Uh, Syracuse has, uh, has some wins. We'll see if they have an opportunity to make some noise in the ACC tournament and get themselves in the conversation, but certainly Clemson with a victory, especially at home, um, would strengthen its case. Wake Forest can't afford to lose at home against Georgia Tech, especially after coming up short over the weekend at Virginia Tech. They blew a game that they had one at the half uh, against the Hokies and Pittsburgh hosts uh, Florida State. Panthers uh, have some quality wins on the resume, especially on the road. Pitt's got to handle the Knowles and, again, make some noise in D.C. in the ACC tournament. So ACC wide open, um, you know, but basically at this point only uh, – Duke and North Carolina can feel really uh, strong about their case right now. Virginia, Wake Forest, um, uh, Clemson, all those teams still have work to do. South Florida is the American regular season champ, but they might have to win the conference tournament given their lack of quad one wins. Uh, they will strengthen their at-large case uh, at home against Tulane and the, at the Yingling Center, they're selling out those games where people used to not go to Bulls games. So nice atmosphere there down in Tampa. We'll see if they can handle business against the Green Wave. In the SEC, Ole Miss is on the firmly on the bubble. They're at Georgia, can't afford a loss there. Um, Rebels right there on the cusp, last four in, last four out. In the Big East, a couple bubble teams there, Butler, St. John's, Providence, uh, you know, the only teams that can really feel strong about their chances to be in the NCAA tournament are UConn, Marquette, and Creighton. Johnny's are at the Paul. Friars are at Georgetown. Both of those teams have to take care of business. Texas Tech is at Oklahoma State. Red Raiders right now would be in the field. Uh, beating the Cowboys on the road uh, would go a long way into strengthening that case. Oklahoma also in the field at this point. You know, tough loss at home to Houston at the buzzer, but it just goes to show you that Porter Moser has the Sooners headed in the right direction. If they handle business against Cincinnati, that's another win um, that could really strengthen its case. And uh, in the A-10, Richmond defeated VCU over the weekend. They look like they're going to be the regular season champs. Uh, we'll see if the A-10 is a multi-bid league. Spiders have work to do in the conference tournament. Dayton would be the strongest at-large selection and have to take care of business at St. Louis tonight. BCU, especially after that loss, to stay in the conversation, need to beat Duquesne at home. And the Mountain West, we'll see if uh, five teams get in. Uh, you know, some, some might even say six have a shot. I don't think UNLV despite their 11-5 and five conference record going into uh, tonight's home game against San Diego State, uh, has the collective strength on that resume to make the field as an at-large. I think they have to win the conference tournament in Vegas. Uh, but certainly, the Rebels are playing their best basketball. They host the Aztecs to 11-5 and five teams in the Mountain West. 11-5 and five Nevada, I think they're going to get in regardless of what happens going forward. But certainly, they could use a win at Boise State which uh, has moved into a first place tie with Utah State. The Aggies get to watch the carnage and hold the tiebreaker over the Broncos. So if they handle business, Utah State will be the number one seed in the Mountain West Conference Tournament. We lost our free play yesterday uh, on the Atlantic Sun. I liked uh, Florida Gulf Coast to beat Queens uh, of North Carolina. The Royals ended up 
picking up the victory and will play Stetson tonight as the A-Sun quarterfinals tip off. Jacksonville also won uh, over Kennesaw State there at number one seed, Eastern Kentucky. North Florida plays at Austin P. North Alabama at Lipsum, Lipscomb. Uh, and uh, we'll get you a free play in that tournament uh, in, at the end of this video, which is coming up. Uh, the other two conference tournaments that tip off, Patriot League, we've got both uh, Armed Forces Services uh, going at home with Navy hosting Loyola, Maryland, and Army hosting Holy Cross in the Patriot League. And in the Horizon League uh, campus sites, you've got Milwaukee hosting Detroit, Fort Wayne hosting Robert Morris, and Cleveland State hosting IUPUI. And our free play, free winner for tonight, and again, we need to bounce back. We're going to pick on the Queens Royals again after uh, coming up with a victory. They shot the ball well against FTCU. They now visit number two seed Stets, and they stayed up in the land overnight to play this game. So it's a back-to-back -back situation against a Hatters team that will have uh, a lot of support at the Edmund Center. That building is very small, but uh, all the fans feel like they're on top of you. A uh, heavy contingent of, of Stetson fans should help the uh, Hatters deliver that result, and they're only laying four and a half. So that's what we'll ride for today's free play on Tuesday. Stetson minus four and a half over Queens to move on to the Atlantic Sun semifinals. Again, you can see all of my work at uh, pb.buzz slash tm. Thanks for visiting the Playbook Experts YouTube channel, and uh, be aware that we do recap and free pick videos uh, on every day, Monday through Friday, and also have shows going off on Friday with Mark Lawrence and the crew. So definitely stay tuned for all that. I'm Tony Mejia signing off and wishing you a lot of winnings on a happy Tuesday.